most connected guys in the NBA. You played the big three Celtics, the OKC Thunder, the Cavs with LeBron, and you got a little Pelicans, Kendrick Perkins, 15 years in the NBA. So I was saying to start the show, I feel like Milwaukee and Toronto, it's the same team. I got a dude. And both Kawhi and Giannis, frankly, look a little tired because right. they have you have to rely on Kawhi. Um, I mean, it, first of all, let's start with that premise. I, I, I just think I think they're the same team. I agree. I think I think they're they're evenly matched. It could go either way. Like if these guys was to play each other ten times, it'd probably be five and five. By the way, last time you were on this show, I thought the series was over. You told me. You said Toronto was going to even it up. Yeah. I mean, you know, because at the end of the day, I felt like game one, Toronto felt like they should have won that game. So I think they have a lot of confidence. And Toronto have a lot of experience. But I agree with you. I think these teams are evenly matched. Um, and to Kawhi and Giannis both look fatigued, but they're guarding each other. And it's a lot of uh, battling down low. And I think this going to come down to this. This series comes down to the others. I mean, like, on the road, Marcus Hall was horrible. And then at home, he was great. Um, Kyle Larry, he, you don't know if you'll get two points or 30 points. <laughs> um, Eric Bledsoe, I mean... What happened? He, he's been a no-show basically these whole playoffs. I mean, George Hill has been... Better. Yes, the best point guard on Milwaukee team. And then you get Chris Middleton, who just... Went off last night, but they still lost. And then, like, see, Ackham struggled. So I think they evenly matched, but it's going to come down to the others. And, you know, uh, the series don't start basically until one team wins on the road. Um, you, you know, I want to talk about this time in the NBA because I think it's very clear that, I mean, look, just take the Warriors. Right. Iggy's hurt. Mm -hmm. Boogie and KD are out. And Steph's not 100%. Um, let's take... The Raptors, Kawhi Leonard's shot. He looks exhausted. Giannis now can't hit a free throw. So he's got some mental or physical fatigue. Right. Um, so you look around all these teams. Houston looked tired. Right. Harden looked tired from having to chase Steph around. So uh, Damian Lillard, by the way, got hurt. So when you get to the end of an NBA season, mm -hmm. we always think it's coaching. And we think it's schematics. Is it? What is it? No, it's, it comes down to heart and will. And who wanted the most? I mean, you could do, you could watch all the film you want. You could scout guys, but at the end of the day, you know, you know everyone's tendency. So it comes down to who's going to do the little things and who's going to grind it out. It comes down to who wanted the most because you get deep into the playoffs, and I think that's what Golden State hold the edge over everybody. They've been here before, so at the end of the day, they know how to train them bodies. They know what proper rest to get. They've been here before. You seen Dame Lillard. He, it seemed like he was just so fatigued. And you're watching Giannis right now. He's fatigued because he's never been this deep in the playoffs. Okay, so you played with that old Boston team. Right. Okay, KG was old. Ray Allen, Paul Pierce. So take me to that old Celtic team. Did Doc, I always heard stories mm -hmm. that when Doc would take those Celtics on the road, he wouldn't practice, but he didn't want to miss practice in Boston right? because then everybody could see it. And that I I always I always heard Doc Rivers took care of the old guys on that team. He took care of everybody. So the thing with Doc was was that he rather he rather you give it to him in the game than that practice. And we we never really practiced. Even our practice <laughs> no seriously. Even our practice days were like just coming in, getting shots and weightlifting. Guys who weren't playing, you know, then they'll have to go out and maybe play three on three. But guys who were playing heavy minutes, it was our practice days were weights, treatments, and shots. And Doc knew this, and he, he was preparing us for the marathon and not the sprint. And I think that's what Doc, you know. Um, that's what they're doing in Golden State. Absolutely. And, and you got to give, and, and to me, Steve Kerr don't get enough credit. His coaching staff don't get enough credit because, you know, with Iggy out, um, Cousins out, and KD out uh, last game, he did a perfect. He did a great job of of putting guys on the floor together, and and, and his rotations were on point. Um, I, and Looney stepped up big. McKinley stepped up big. Uh, Cook gave him some valuable minutes. Even Jarepko. So at the end of the day, I think Steve Kerr don't get enough credit. Yeah, obviously, you know, you have Steph, you have Draymond, you have Clay. Who they make, should be the most exhausted team, Perk. Absolutely. Golden State should be shot, and they look fresh. Right, because. 
they've been here before, so they know what it takes. You heard what Draymond Green said. You know, you heard we heard what Draymond Green said. He lost 25 pounds. He lost 25 pounds towards the end of the season. Why? Because he knew he needed to lose that weight to be able to sustain and be able to play at a high level through these whole playoffs. I want you to go back to your career. You, I, I, you said something interesting. You talked about it's guts and it's will. Were you ever in a playoff series, mm -hmm. and you were in a lot of them, that you knew everybody on the floor was shot? Yes, I remember. I mean, it was it – was, and, and I was hurt. That's the sad part about it. It was Game 7, NBA Finals, uh, Celtics versus Lakers, and – I mean, everyone was tired. You could was, see it. Yeah, you could see it. I mean, you you traveling from, you know, uh, you know, the six hour plane ride back and forth, <laughs> back and forth, time change and everything. So, on both sides, I think like that game, everybody shot hard, but itself for Ron. I Artes. remember that. Yeah, itself for Ron Artest. So, you know, it was, it came down the wheel. Like, you know, at the end of the day, I always say, yeah, guys look at Ron Artest and he, that game, and he had twenty and ten or whatever, but. People don't understand. Kobe had like 18 rebounds, like, and I think like six of them was offensive. Like that's will. Like that's that's not. And he was six for 24 shooting. He had a terrible game. Exactly, seven. but he went. But he did other things. And it comes down to that tests your heart, your conditioning, and who wanted the most. Like I said before. So you know LeBron and KD were showing pictures for our uh, radio audience of Kendrick with uh, his arm around KD and next to LeBron James. And you were always one of those veterans. You were a tough guy. Players respected you. Stars respected you. Stars would ask you questions. They listened to you. So I'm hearing all this stuff about KD, and my takeaway is, listen, man, you keep telling me he's going to the Knicks, Brooklyn, Lakers, Clippers. They all got issues. They either got a weak roster, an owner I don't trust, not much of a history I can rely on. Right. Like, I mean, take me inside of KD. Do you think he's got it all figured out? I, I, right now, I think KD's just living in the moment. I don't know. I don't think KD know what he want to do. But on the flip side of it, if I'm KD, I think I would really consider going to the Clippers. How come? I think because the Clippers are big. They, with the new ownership, I love what he's doing. The front office with Lawrence Frank and uh, Michael Winger. Michael Winger. Uh, doing a great job. Doc did a a hell of a job this year with this group of guys. It may have been his best yeah. coaching job. Yes. By the way, he told me that was his second favorite team to the 2008 Celtics. I mean, because guys bought in. He said he didn't want the season to end. It was so fun. And to me, you look at the Clipper organization, even at, uh, at Jerry West, the legend, I mean, you look at him and it's like, Smart. They, they, stability, man. And it's it's like, yeah, this is a franchise. And you can see Kevin Durant going there. It's, it's in L.A. Um, he, you know, he could flourish and, and be himself, and it would be his team. And I would love to see KD play for a coach like Doc Rivers, you know, assistant coaches and Rex and Sam Cassell and, you know, Omar Hill, great group of guys. And, and, and the way Doc draws up plays and his play calling, I could just imagine the plays he would draw for Kevin Durant. By the way, um, I, I, I'm, listen, Magic's a legend. Lights up a room. <laughs> but Magic, uh, even Magic, like the, the nicest guy in the world, kind of turned and pivoted on the Lakers this week. I, I, if I'm LeBron and I'm watching that, I'm thinking, that was, that was my one guy I know I could invite into a room with me and we could sell. Right. Like, if you were LeBron this morning, are you a little frightened about the next two years of this contract before well, I, you have an option? I don't know if I'm frightened. I'm more so confused. But because for the simple fact, it's like, okay, what's really going on? And then everybody have this this thing of saying, oh, Braun runs the organization. Well, I tell Clearly. You, uh, well, I tell you what. If things go wrong this year, you can't point the finger at LeBron. I tell you that. But... I actually talked to LeBron and, uh, yesterday, and he's he's in good spirits. He's working out, and like he said, he only could control what he could control. And he so just, he was in a good mood. He, I mean, he he wasn't in a bad mood. You know what I mean? So it wasn't like he was just depressed. But at the end of the day, I was with Magic on how he handled the situation. Yeah. Honestly, I thought um, he addressed the problem. Um, he took a lot of heat over the last couple of weeks about it. 
and he came out and he had to protect himself and he had to protect his brand. Nobody from the Lakers did. No, no, uh, that's fair. That's, that was kind of our takeaway. Joy what? and I are like, listen, you got people were calling you a fool for three weeks. You got You have a. You literally have a billion dollar brand. Right. You got to protect your brand. Absolutely. And Magic is a great guy. Everybody love Magic. I love Magic. I mean, you have to love Magic because he's a guy that is willing to help others uh, be successful. If you ever met, meet him, he's not a guy who want to hold everything to himself. No. If he have something, a business idea, you can go ask him, and he, he'll he drop the knowledge to you. So at the end of the day, like I said, in the organization, the problem I have with some NBA organizations is that they hire their friends. Oh, yeah. And not— and not and <laughs> Competent not, people. Right, and not the right people for the job. And and at the end of the day, um, you know— I just hate that for Magic, but we all know about Rob Palenka, his character. I mean, he, Not you good. know, it's been that way since he was an agent. Yeah. And it's hard for yeah. anybody we, to say yeah. anything about it. Per- perfect ending. We got to go. Great seeing you. Thank you, Kyla. Hour two next. Sorry.